Now to finish up this session, let me give you one more technique to kind of put into your bag of modeling tricks to give you some powerful tools to model the custom furniture and components that you may need to. And to do that, let's go ahead and take a look at another piece of just oh, custom furniture. In this case, I'll switch over to some furniture that was available in the McCallman house. Okay, and we don't have a whole lot of detail here, but let me kind of zoom in on what we do have. There's all sorts of interesting pieces, like there's these custom plywood chairs where we have uh, some side views, a back view, a front view. Let's see if we can go ahead and model something like that. Because this is going to be something very similar to that custom or that in-place component. But I'm going to advocate for this one that we do it a little bit differently. I'm going to say let's go ahead and create a custom family, which is very much like an in-place component but has the additional capability of being able to be reused in different projects and kind of moved around a whole lot more freely. This chair really isn't so much as dependent on the geometry of the building. It has its own kind of custom geometry, but it's really something that we'd like to be able to use in many different house, houses. And I bet if we sort of followed Schindler's history, we'd find that he did do something like this in a lot of different houses or variations on this theme. So let's kind of take a look at how we could go through and create something like this. And we could also kind of take a look at the plywood table underneath it. It's going to be a very similar technique where really we're going to go ahead and build this up out of different pieces. And just in analyzing this, I'm not sure if you can tell, when I look at this, I'm looking at really, oh, one, two, and maybe three different extrusions. And that'll probably get us through most of what we need. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this. What I'm going to do is go on back over to Revit. And as opposed to creating an in-place component, I'm going to say, let's go ahead and create a family that we can use. And to do that, what I'll do is go under the Revit menu. And I'll say new and say let's create a family and in many ways this is going to look very very similar to what we've been doing with these in-place components. So I can choose family. Let's save that existing project away. Actually it's funny I haven't saved this yet so uh, let me just go through and I'll put it out there in the folder where we've been saving things for this class. Um, session six, and this is going to be called uh, in place component examples. That was the old one. We're creating the new one now. Okay, when we go through and create a family, sort of in the same sense that we had to assign different in place components to family types, we will do the same thing in terms of opening up a template for the family. And I'm going to just go ahead and pull open the furniture template. Okay, There's a lot of different templates for different uh, types of elements based on whether they're generic or a specific category, whether they're hosted on a wall or hosted on a roof. But we're going to start with something simple and we'll just do a piece of furniture. And when we open that up, so I got that you'll see that what we get is really its own separate little drawing environment. It looks very similar in a lot of different ways has some reference planes in the middle that are going to help us locate our furniture. But uh, we'll start basically creating this here and then place it in our projects. These reference planes are really just a front and this is a center front to back and this is center left to right. So that's actually considered the origin. That little placement point will be right there where those two things intersect. So let's think about how we can go through and create something along the lines of what we want. For example, if we want to go through and let's take a look at that uh, drawing again, really model this piece of furniture. Let's think about how it will come together. For example, one piece that I'm looking at is really just this sloping back piece that has that little bit of an extension on the end of it. Okay, and I can't really read precisely what the dimensions are, but we'll see if we can actually come oh somewhat close to what we want in here. Okay, let me just kind of think about the best way to do that. I got that back slope there, I got that plane there. Yeah, okay, let's just go ahead and do that. What we'll do is, we'll come back over to uh, Revit, 
And what I'm going to do is actually draw that not in plan view, but as I think about trying to go through and create those what I'll call extrusions, what it would probably be helpful to do is do that in a side view. This one over here will be an extrusion in the side view. Actually, they're all going to be extrusions in the side view, really, as I think about it. So let's just go ahead and kind of, you know, create something like that as a starting point. Actually, I take that back. There's actually a fourth piece. I didn't really pay much attention to it, the base. But all those I think I could probably extrude in the side view. So let's kind of take a look at how we do that. Okay. Um, let's go, say, to the right side view. That will be kind of closest to what we were looking at there. There's going to be a couple of big pieces to it. And again, I'm not going to be incredibly careful about this whole issue of the precise geometry. Uh, because the dimensions I don't really have to work with or have a hard time reading them on that uh, drawing. But we can go ahead and get started and uh, come up with something that's probably pretty close. Yeah. In terms of thinking about those different extrusions, there's several different pieces. The first one that I'll go through and create is the one, oh, it's what I think is probably the probably most prominent piece, this big back piece that's coming up and doing that little hook back there. So let's think about that piece. I'll switch back over to Revit. We're going to make this thing out of plywood. So it kind of comes sort of like this. It slopes up. There is some point where we place it. It's probably right about the point where the uh, seat intersects. But there's going to be some height to it. Oh, what would be a reasonable height for that thing? Maybe about three feet high, something like that. I'll go ahead and kick it back like that. In terms of thinking about the thickness of this thing, you probably, if it's plywood, is only on the order of three quarters of an inch thick, something like that. That's probably enough to get ourselves started. What I'll do now is just do some offsetting, because that'll probably be easier to kind of create the other surfaces. Just follow those existing profiles. So I'll offset this one. I'm looking, oh, I'm sorry, I put it in the depth field, which is not where I want to put it. I really want to put it over here in the offset field. Okay, I'll offset it to this side, I'll offset it to that side. Even down here at the bottom, I'm going to do a little bit of offset because what I'm going to do is allow a little bit of space at the bottom where that plywood base is going to be. So I'll trim this up. Actually looking pretty good in terms of what's going on. In terms of the depth, I want to think about this in terms of really relative to the center line, so it'll sort of be partly positive, partly negative. And if I go looking at that, it's a little hard to tell what's going on. I'm going to guess that chair is maybe oh, 2 feet, 18 inches. It's going to be something like that, maybe 18 inches wide, something like that. So what would that be? If I was thinking about this extrusion, it'd be, oh, maybe minus 9 inches to positive 9 inches. Not 9 feet. Okay. It's also going to have some sort of material. I could go through and make that a parameter that I can change or assign something to it, really either way. Let me just go ahead and I'm going to just create a material as opposed to making it parametric. Maybe we'll talk about parametric stuff next week. Okay, I'll just call it like a plywood body. Oh, give it kind of a yellowy brown color. Okay, and I can complete that first extrusion. Let's just take a look at it in 3D and hmm, that's not too bad. That's actually looking pretty good. Okay, let's go back to that right side and do some more of the extrusions. I do need to go through and create an extrusion for that base. So it looks like that is just coming on back. So let's go through and do that. Let me zoom on out a little. And this is going to be another extrusion. This one I can almost do as a rectangle and stretch it out a little bit. 
course, I did a sloppy job of putting the rectangle in there. Let me zoom in a little bit better. So, uh, kind of like in here somewhere. Let me zoom on in. Let's take a look at my model again. Just keep that open in another window where I can actually sort of see it. So coming back, not quite as far back, coming to the front. So really what I almost want to do is just move this whole thing. In fact, if I was being good about this, Stretch that out some more to the front. Doesn't quite look like I have the proportions very right just yet. So I think it extends even further out towards the front. And again, for my modeling. I should do a better job of actually going through and grabbing dimensions so you can do this accurately. Close that one up. Same sort of distance, negative 9 to positive 9, that should be fine. Let me zoom to fit. Actually, even in terms of this whole thing, let me go ahead and move both those pieces a little bit. Because what I want to do is actually sort of you know, have that placement point mean something significant. And in this case, you know, what I want it to mean is actually I'll just do it at the point of where the back meets the base, something like that. Okay, so far so good. Looks like we're sloping back a little bit too far, but I think you're going to get the idea of how this works. For the final pieces, let's go ahead and put the seat element in there. We'll again do that as an extrusion. Seats are almost always oh, somewhere around 14 inches off the ground, something like that. So let's just go ahead and start somewhere like that. It looks like it slopes up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at our model again. It looks like I'm sloping a little bit too far, and I want it to extend on the edge just a little bit. Not too, too bad. Be a little bit steep. Okay, and now we'll go through and again offset this thing because once again the 0, 0 0.75 is good to follow that existing geometry. Let's close that out one more time. We're almost there. We'll go ahead and kind of close that, although that might be squarish. We'll sort of figure that out. This one, I'll just kind of pick right on this surface, and then I'll do some trimming. Okay. Again, it's the full width, so we'll say okay to that. And for the very final piece of this, let's go ahead and just put that base in there, which is it's vertical on the front and kind of sloping back on the back. Okay, that ought to be pretty easy to match. So we'll say that it is Again, an extrusion. It's going to be vertical on the front. Again, our dimensions are probably off, but the general kind of gist of where we're going is going to be about right. Sloping back to here, coming back in there. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit different because it's not going to be the full nine inches thick. This could actually be oh half of three quarters, so three eighths, which is what zero zero three seven five. And minus zero and actually I do it that way, three eighths. That'll be fine. Okay, let's take a look at this and see how we did. Not too bad in terms of having something that's yeah, reasonably close. It's a little bit odd right now in that we have these two different pieces, the base piece and the back piece, and you're not seeing kind of a firm kind of join between those things. What I can do is say join the geometry 
and it'll figure out oh precisely how those two things match up. Okay, and that'll look a little bit closer and you know be closer to the actual kind of fabrication technique for how the plywood intersected. Okay, so we're looking pretty good there. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll shade that. Not too bad. Let's save this away. Save as, I'll put it out there, and we'll put this in Nick Allman chair. Save that away. Now the advantage of going through and creating things in these families is that we can load them into projects. The McCallman House project, or really any project we want to, and to do that, we could either just uh, either load it into a project directly using this choice in the tool in the ribbon, or we could actually load it by uh, inserting it, loading it, and then saying insert family from within a project. So let's kind of show you how you might do that. Let's load it in here. We can choose what project we want to put that into. Oh, where did we put that? Um, the in-place component examples. We'll put it into that project. So here's my chair. Let me kind of move on down. And I'll put it near my countertop. But you can see if I move on in that the insertion point is going to be, it's really right at that point where the base is meeting the bottom. We can place that chair here. And once that chair is here, we can go through and kind of put a lot of them in and uh, just kind of move them around and kind of copy them however we want to. So for example, I could copy that, kind of put another one over here. I can take those and maybe I'll mirror those around some axis. Okay. Or uh, go through and rotate them around in an array. Whatever it's going to take to go ahead and put them in here. But when I do that, You'll see I can create an entire suite of McAlman family furniture and kind of move them around. And now they're available not only in this project, but in other projects. And that's really the, the quick and dirty essence of how you can go ahead and kind of create custom furniture objects. There's a lot more to it that we can do to add some extra power. If you want to keep on practicing, you can think about, oh, just how you'd break down anything. For example, there's this table component, which is really just, again, mostly a series of different extrusions. There's a round extrusion for the wheels, but most of these are kind of relatively flat extrusions. And the hard part is just thinking about really how to draw the planes to create those extrusions. But all these things, even the, uh, oh, the pieces of furniture over here, like the sofas with the kind of triangular sides and things like that, Almost all of these could be created either with an extrusion or some sort of sweep. So I'll leave that for you to play with a little bit now in terms of uh, just getting started with all this stuff. And maybe we'll kind of pick that up again next time in terms of like uh, just kind of continuing to kind of develop our skills in terms of creating different families. So one thing I definitely have on the list for next time is just looking at this whole issue of uh, within these families, we've created something which is a relatively static component in that it doesn't really respond to parameters. It is a fixed size. And one of the next skills we need to learn is really how you can go ahead and start adding parameters that let us change these and resize these things to be different sizes of tables or different types of chairs, things like that. And if you want to get a start on that and just get a preview, again, go to that BIM curriculum. That's a good place to get started. And one of the lessons that's available in there is exercise 153. That's all about creating custom families and that basically talks about doing what we've just been doing kind of creating a single object but then actually using parameters to start driving its behavior and kind of making it very customizable and adaptable to any situation so hopefully that's enough to get you started and you can have a good week of modeling ahead have a great time for the folks of you who are going to los angeles for the trip down there that sounds like a fantastic thing and i wish i could join you but uh, and we will uh, be checking back in with you and continuing to support you as you keep on going with your modeling projects. So uh, good luck with it. You guys take care.